Hello, welcome everybody to this final panel discussion of seven. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm so excited um, for what's to come here in the next hour. So um, I, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what is seven? Um, I've been, it seems like I've been MIA for a little while um, because I've been working on this new project that I'm really excited to share with you guys. So seven, the way that I have, we, I, the team and myself have been labeling this is that it is a, like a contemporary exploration of blackness and fatness. So in the times of COVID, um, and I hope everyone is well um, and families are well, uh, I decided I was, uh, I, I was uh, approached uh, by some uh, fellow Kindling Arts Festival people who were interested in me doing a new piece. Um, and I decided that maybe instead of it being a live show, that it might be a very interesting thing to film it. So what I have been, I've started this journey of filming a new piece of work, a new, a new piece of art. So Seven is actually a film um, that I hope will be approximately about an hour long um, uh, about uh, fatness and blackness uh, uh, of black women um, and basically some of the things that I have experienced in my life. Um, so my, my own experiences, but also I'm hoping that these are experiences that um, other, other black women um, and women have, have gone through themselves. Um, so it's hard to put a label on exactly what this piece is because there's so many different themes and there's so many different things going on in this, uh, this piece. So there's actually going to be, um, I, I would say they, they're like vignettes, right? So there's seven vignettes because what we're talking about is the seven deadly sins, um, and the seven heavenly virtues. So I feel that the seven, the seven deadly sins is a topic that a lot of people um, uh, like to discuss or, you know, do pieces on paintings, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it, it, there's just so much to go in depth. But then I love the idea of light and dark. You can't have light without darkness, that sort of thing. Um, and what comes with the seven deadly sins are the seven heavenly virtues. They kind of go together. Um, and the virtues are not talked about very often. So I really wanted to kind of show, to kind of delve into, you know, both of them side by side. So what you will actually be seeing when the whole piece is done are that there are seven clear um, vignettes of these sins that are accompanied with the virtue that discuss all of these different themes. Um, I, I uh, want to thank Metro Arts uh, for funding the development of this project. I, I could not do this without you. Um, I'm, I'm so honored and grateful for all of your help. Um, within this uh, project, within this grant that went through uh, Metro Arts, um, I was able to do uh, several different panels, um, uh, or let's call them story circles. And these story circles, um, uh, I I've, I've been in collaboration with some fabulous local nonprofits, um, uh, the Women of Color Collaborative and the Fashion is for Everybody. Those are the two nonprofits that I'm working with and I'm so excited to be working with them. Um, and in these in these story circles, uh, we just kind of, you know, talked about the themes and the things that, you know, uh, I was wanting to discuss. And, and this has helped me really kind of flush out this piece and um, hoping to um, take all these different experiences and all these different stories to just kind of help me move along through uh, this piece. So um, with that being said, I, I would, I, I had some women who participated in, in these panels that I would love to introduce you to. If I could uh, introduce you to uh, Letitia Glasky Harris. Hello. Hello everyone. 
Thank you, Jennifer, so much for allowing me to be a part of this project of seven and also a part of the sister circle that I had the liberty of being a part of as well. Um, my name is Letitia Glassby Harris, preferably Tisha the therapist. I am a mental health practitioner from Germantown, Tennessee, Metro Memphis area. And I specialize in women, mental health and health related issues. And also um, most of my therapeutic approaches is towards women uh, for mindfulness and also for motivational enhancement therapy. In other words, encouragement and motivation for success of women. So thank you again, Jennifer, for inviting me on to this panel and thank you for having me on in the circle as well. Thank you so much for being here. I, so I, now I would like to introduce you to uh, my good friend, Miss Alicia Hamer. Hi, Hello. thank you for having me, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Of course, it's my pleasure. Um, uh, would you like to say anything about yourself for people who might not know who you are? Oh, sure. My name is Alicia Hamer. I am an um, actor, writer, director here in Nashville, Tennessee, and also co-artistic director of Verge Theater Company. And I'm excited to be here um, as a friend and a supporter. And I can't wait to see this wonderful work that you've done so far. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, Without further ado, what I would love to do right now is to show you and give you a little sneak peek of one of the first, uh, one of the vignettes in the pieces. So this vignette is uh, the Sin Pride. So here we go, buckle up. There was a point in time that I would have run blindfolded down the road for acceptance. The same road where my bare feet stand solid on the soil, where monarchs drug shackles through centuries of disgrace. Gifting black women dirty hands, groveling and shoveling those around us out of shit. Staining our majesty with unending exasperation. We fight your battles and receive no glory. Claiming the name, stamping your emblem, forcing our black soldiers to drop to their knees and worship the idols you advertise. Behold, the conquest is the conqueror. Raise your eyes and look upon the crown. Bask in its brilliance as its jewels flash and flicker. Sparkling treasure adorn this natural pinnacle pointed straight towards the heavens. Witness these lavish robes of splendor. See how they embrace this 
sumptuous pigment bestowed unto us by tribal heritage. Cradling the scepter of the motherland, the royal staff of noble elders, I reclaim my title forthwith. Queen, descendant of greatness, born into excellence, Brown skin is the resplendent example of sublime blessings. Bow down in the presence of triumph. Revel in this profound joy. Our forgiving nature gives you pardon, but it will not absolve the scourge of suffering that queens are born to bear. Sculpted from the queen before me, the empress before her, I hold my head up high, impervious to hatred, unbothered by your aggressions, be they micro or macro, for we are the inspiration of resilience, a symbol in knowledge that our reign is just and true. Celebrate this melanated coronation. The throne sustains our worth, for black has always been the origin. Thank you. 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 to really quick introduce um, a, a, another a friend of mine, Miss uh, Nomalonga Nafe is here. If you would like to just say hello and who you are. Hi, um, my name is Nomalonga, um, but I am also affectionately known as Nomi. Um, and <laughs> I am, I'm happy to be here. This is, this is awesome. Well, thank you for having me, Jennifer. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Nomi was also a part of our story circles um, and a long, long time friend, and uh, she blesses our community with so much wisdom and grace. So thank you so much. So that was the clip of Pride, and I would really quick love to, to kind of discuss it. Um, I, ladies, when, 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 when you think of Black Pride, what, what is something for you that, that, that stands out as a black woman? What, what might black pride be to you? Anybody jump in? Strength. Um, perseverance, struggle. That's what I think of. Yeah. I think of authenticity. I think of, um, a uh, true expression from how we look, how we dress, how we wear mm -hmm. our hair, how mm -hmm. we speak, how loud we laugh. 
Yes. I, I think of all of that and I think of uh, being myself boldly without um, censoring myself or watering myself down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm playing with that idea of, so again, pride is the sin. Pride is one of the sins. And so pride, as I'm playing with this, this black woman having pride. So we as black women, we carry our, our black pride. And so against this religion, which I think is so interesting with pride, as we know, you know, pride is something that should be put away. It's not something that you should show. It's not something that should be flamboyant. Um, it's something you should suppress. Um, mm -hmm. And I know in my experience as a black woman, um, sometimes black pride is, I shouldn't, not sometimes, it, black pride is most times is very looked down upon. People look down on it. Um, and, and I know that sometimes I feel that I don't want to show my pride all the time because I don't know what other people are going to say. I don't, I don't want to upset anyone or make anyone angry or feel weird about it. Um, but then there's that whole thing of no one else is, is helping us and no one else is, is, is putting our pride on display. So we have to do that for ourselves. And I feel that we should feel pride in our culture and our heritage and, and our, all the journeys and, and the trials and tribulations that we go through. So I'm kind of playing, I'm playing with that whole, the religious text might have a different meaning versus what I'm trying to say as a black woman. Now, I know the things you see in this clip, you know, you're seeing this, this beautiful queen-like character with her scepter and her crown. Um, and she's amongst, you know, she's in the earth. She's in her her, her wheelhouse, basically. Um, and it's, I, I'm hoping that, you know, when you see this, that you are feeling that grandeur and the splendor and um, the regalness black woman is about. Um, I also, as a as a as a fat woman, uh, there's also that thing about fat women should suppress, um, you know, their bodies. Uh, we should not show our skin, and we should not wear uh, bright colors, and we should not um, basically feel good about ourselves being strong and beautiful and powerful. Um, so that's kind of what I meant about it's more than one thing, which, you know, that's art, right, guys? Right. Um, but it's a lot of things that will be smushed into all of these different vignettes. Um, but I just feel that as a Black woman and lady, uh, I, I hope you're feeling it too, that that, that is just something that um, should be on display. Black pride mm -hmm. should be on display and it should not be something that we have any fear in whatsoever to show to whomever we want to show it to. And I would hope that other people um, can also find uh, the joy in, in, in that black pride. Um, because I just think it's something that we could all really be proud of. Y'all feel that? You guys feel that, right? Yeah. So that's basically what I'm saying about um, this whole um, pride. pride thing. Um, and also, you know, it's, it's, I think it's interesting with the look of it, I hope, because I wanted to also play with that whole um, tribal image, the tribal image but also a contemporary image. So blurring those two and making those two work, because there's also that theme of, I know for um, some black people, there's that whole, is it, um, is it appropriate for other black people to, or people who are not African to wear tribal markings? Um, is that culture of appropriation, is it not? Uh, do you have to be African of African well, African um, descent to to wear these markings or not? Um, so I kind of wanted to throw that in there. Um, it's something to think about. Uh, I personally, uh, I, I'm borderline on it. I, I, get, I get it. And mm -hmm. then also 
so there's that again it's that pride of shouldn't all black people be able to but then when you look at the other side it's like mm, maybe not um so that's something uh you know to think about through all of all of that um I would like to now um, jump into another vignette. Uh, this vignette is uh, the first part of Gluttony. So there are actually two sections to Gluttony. Um, uh, it, in, in the piece as a whole, it's all pretty seamless, um, but there are two sides to gluttony. So the first part of what you're going to see of gluttony is actually uh, the virtue. So it's the virtue not being in itself. Um, but I would love to jump into that uh, second clip. So uh, here we go with that. This is gluttony.
Hey, okay. So that was the clip, uh, the first part of gluttony. That is uh, the, the temperance uh, side of it, the virtue. So um, ladies, I have a question. So with temperance, um, as we know, that is um, the virtue that's basically saying that one should, uh, you know, wait. It, that's that suppression side, right? So that versus the gluttony. Um, as uh, when we're talking about gluttony, uh, definitely this whole image of this cake that is happening, which is, is, is a big thing that is like the center, the center of this piece. Um, uh, I know for, uh, for, it, for me as a black woman, food is such a big part of my life of, of, I feel that it is a big part of black culture. We all gather for food. We, you know, we find joy in, in eating with others, be it, uh, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, cookouts, barbecues, whatever it is. Um, what, how do you feel um, about um, having to maybe suppress those things that, those things that maybe if it's not food, if it's something else like um, having to suppress the want to um, maybe, you know, this whole code switching idea to, to speak a certain way around your black friends than you would your, your, your white friends. Um, what is that, like, what is that like for you? Like, what does that mean to you? this whole to me it feels like I'm not being my true self I'm not being authentic um I'm hiding something or I'm ashamed of something um or ashamed to be who I am so that's how it feels to me uh as a black woman speaking with different cultures or different people of different races and trying to uh, even when we're pronouncing our words correctly as a Black woman, uh, we're often told that we're speaking white or we're not, we're talking proper. Um, but in, in essence, it's the way that we talk, it's the way that we speak, that it, it's our culture. We're all, all different walks of life. Uh, we're not all the same. So I feel like it's kind of shaming yourself or being embarrassed to be who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that word shame. I mean, I feel that there, there is, and I hate that. Like, I hate that there's a level of shame to it, um, to have to feel that you cannot be your true self in front of people. Um, I feel that with, um, with food as well, like as a, again, as a, as a plus size woman, as a fat woman, um, having to be in a, public situation, uh, especially say you're at a, a company uh, Christmas party or something like that. And there's all this food around and you feel that you always have these eyes on you. There's always somebody watching you. Um, and you kind of have to do everything that you can to not eat really anything um, in front of company, um, in front of others. So I was really playing with this idea. Um, again, I think Letitia, you mentioned uh, this proper, this, this proper air, this, this cutesy air that you put on. Um, and that air I was trying to really bring to life with temperance. So you are seeing this kind of cutesy, I love Lucy, uh, you know, picturesque uh, black woman who uh, is there for the party and is there um, to entertain everyone with her, uh, you know, the way she looks and the way she carries herself and, and, and um, uh, even the way that the cake is, everything has to be perfect. And it's not quite honest. Uh, it's, it's the show, it's the show that black women have to put on, right? It's, it's, and, it, and it doesn't really stop. So then that's what you are, um, I hope that you're seeing this internal drive basically um, of 
what we see on the outside versus what she's actually feeling on the inside. Um, and I feel that, I feel that even when you have, um, that we know we have the sin and the virtue, uh, that they do, it's that light and the dark and it, and it does go together. Um, I really kind of wanted to separate the two um, because I just feel that, you know, as, as a black woman, it, it almost, there, there always seems to be this kind of tug and pull that always happens, you know, right? Like there's this tug and pull of, I, I, want, I, I want to always 100% um, authentically be myself. Um, and, and I feel that, you know, I drive it and it's like, this is who I am. This is, this is, this is what encompasses me. But then when I get put into these, um, white situations, um, something happens and I, I'm not even sure what it is all the time, but something happens to where there's something within me that feels, um, it's those eyes, like there's always someone watching me, there's always someone judging me, there's always some, and it's like, I, I it's not that I feel afraid, but I, I, I feel that um, I just can't really be, you know, you know that I can't just really be myself all the time. And I think that comes from just not having a diverse room. There are many instances and, in, you know, I'm gonna speak for myself, there are many instances like, in my professional career where I'm the only, not, not only the only black woman, but the only black person in the room. And I think that just comes from a lot of, you know, there just not being enough black people in the room, not being enough black people at the table to where there are diverse environments. And many times we feel that way because we are the only people in the rooms. You know, and, and I think that that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize that when we are, when you are, I, myself, every, if, when you are a black person in a white situation, that there is really, it's almost this wave of relief when you see that other black person come in, <laughs> yes. you know them, right? If you know them. No. You're like, hey, fam. That's <laughs> my girl. <laughs> You, it, there's just kind of that loneliness and there's that that kind of you know what it feels like it's almost you feel like you're in this box you're like in this kind of like a closed box that it, it's a trapped feeling you feel trapped you kind of can't there's nowhere to go you know you can't just get up and walk out of a meeting because you don't feel comfortable right, right. Um, yeah we don't get that uh uh we don't get to to do that so uh yeah there's just this kind of wave of relief right so with, with all of that, you know, I, I'm playing too with that whole, this cake, really, this cake, it, it's not just a cake. It's like, for me, this cake represents the, the oversweetness, the, 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 the thick kind of layered effect that uh, we have to always have with us to be able to just put it on when we need to and to take it off when we want to. But, you know, there is this thing that is there. Um, and again, you know, so again, there's so many different things that smush all in between that. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to tell you guys, uh, Alicia and Nomi and Letitia, thank you so much for being a part of this panel discussion. I know that there's tons that we want to talk about and, yeah. and we'll talk about uh, because you know, this project again is, is still going and it's starting and, and we have lots of things to do. So uh, thank you so much for- and Jennifer, I just wanted welcome. to say really quickly, I wanted to thank you for educating me because we were hanging out, we were having one of our Zoom hangouts and you were talking about the word fat and you were talking about yourself and you were like, oh, we were talking about something and you were like, cause I'm fat, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, Jennifer, why'd you say that? You know, and you were like, what? I'm fat. And we really had just a great conversation about the word and how you were like, we have to take, you were telling me how you took away like 
the fear and the negativity around that word. And you're like, it's just a descriptor, but it's not like a negative descriptor. And I don't have to feel bad because I have a bigger body. And I'm thinking of it like you were being down on yourself. And I was like, don't say that Jennifer, blah, blah, blah. But I just want to thank you for educating me on that because when um, I would, he- when I hear people now, when I hear people say fat, I'm like, it's just a descriptor, but it's not a negative thing that I have to tell them not to say. It's just a descriptor, but there's no power or negativity behind it unless we give it that. So I want to thank you for educating me. Absolutely, Alicia. And thank you for listening because it is just that, you know, the word means something different to, to each person, but I do truly believe it is just a descriptor and it's just like anything else. When you give it that power to be hurtful or to make you feel some kind of way. Um, you know, and as women, definitely it's something I feel that we just need to take back. Like mm-hmm. that black woman, that's who I am. So mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate you guys just really kind of jumping on board and, and being a part of this project. And I cannot wait to explore the rest of it with you. So thank you so much. I hope you guys uh, stick around for the end, but thank you so much for jumping on this panel. I appreciate it. Um, I now would like to uh, introduce to you um, uh, one of my uh, collaborators. Um, I'm gonna turn the mic over to her. Um, Her name is Audra Almond Harvey. She's a, a dear, dear friend of mine. And she is also the executive director of Abrasive Media. And we are so excited that she is here to kind of in see the rest of this conversation. Hello, Miss Audra. Hello, Jennifer. How does it feel to be bringing this to your audience? You know what? It's to me, it's it's nuts. It's totally crazy. Yeah. Um, but I just feel that that's, you know, when you're in the start of a project, um, you know, it's still in that uh, baby stage. Of, mm-hmm. I've just brought this toddler home and I really don't want anyone to touch it yet, but I want to <laughs> yeah. oh, baby, you know? So yeah. it's awesome and it's great. And I hope that people are excited to see what this piece is going to end up being. Yeah, I'm definitely excited. Um, so we're going to delve a little bit into the creative process behind the making of Seven. Um, And joining us today, we also have Valerie Whitcomb. Um, Valerie is an award-winning gay filmmaker who has more than 20 years in video production. In 2018, she directed and produced a full-length documentary, The Blueberry Farmer, which played at festivals around the country. And then we also have with us Marcus Hayes. And Marcus is a professor of dance and African studies at Austin P University. He's a longtime collaborator of Jennifer. And he's going to be working with a creative team to create two distinct choreographic segments in the film project. And also just advise on movement throughout the space. So thank you guys for joining us today. Glad to be here. Awesome. Yes, hello everyone. Hello, you guys. So my first- Thanks. My first question is for Marcus. Um, Can you talk a little bit about your specialty, Um, giving the audience just some background? I I love, you brought, sparked my curiosity with um, the African influences on social dance and how that is brought to film. Oh, okay. Well, so that's that's a really interesting question. That's actually not how this piece originated, but um, that that part of my research, um, I think, is also woven into everything that I do. So it's it's interesting. It's probably there without it consciously being mm-hmm. there. Like I didn't go into working with Jennifer on this piece with that in mind, um, because this this piece came from a different place. Uh, so I think um, we originally like the 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 seed material and that subject matter of this tension between Jennifer and the cake goes back yeah. to maybe 2007, 2008, something like that. So, so this, this idea has been around and has been, it's, it was a little tiny seed that is now obviously continuing to grow. Um, and that's, that's really where that, the idea came from is that, that tension um, that, and Jennifer is able to handle that movement and that subject matter expertly. 
And Val, the video looks fantastic. It is, it's like a dream. Thank it's exactly you. what I was imagining. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing Val. the, the footage is amazing. Okay. Um, I think it's, there's a, there's a real love for your subject that comes through, um, which I was really so when I was reading my notes and I eventually oh. realized your mom. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and her her mama Emily is second camera on this project. That's she's awesome. Been doing fabulous. That's awesome. I mean, every, every every shot she did, I could use. I mean, it was great. That's wonderful. Um, can you talk a little bit how you approached adapting the poetry and the movement into film? I know that that is something that can be challenging because those uh, mediums are not always presented through film. Right. Well, the biggest thing to me was trying to. See, see the story from behind Jennifer's eyelids. When you close your eyes, you, if you have a story, you, you can see it. And so in talking with her over time, uh, that's what I was trying to get at with her. And I know it was probably frustrating all my you know, questions, this and that, but I was just trying to get from different angles with her over several conversations her perception of what we were trying to do. And then of course, when she showed up in costume, that, that helped, you know, she became the character in front of me and, and she's great to film. I'll tell you that she's a natural mm -hmm. with the camera, but uh, I, I, you know, I'm so far, you know, we've done the two different segments and I, I, I feel like we're, it's, it's starting to look like a story in my mind, which I, I you mm -hmm. know, this is the first time I've worked with somebody else on their vision instead of trying to create something in my head. So that that's a growth thing for me. And I've also done a lot of, I've done some music videos, but I, I've done a lot of documentary stuff. And so I wanted to branch out from that. And this is, you know, the vehicle to do it because I'm learning myself so much while we're doing it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing a little bit about your background. I, I always think it's really fascinating when you're taking one genre and translating it to um, a way that it's not normally presented, or I won't say normally, but it's people's association mm -hmm. isn't necessarily with film, with movement. Um, Jennifer, can you tell, you're, so you're visionary and you're also embodying this work as a physical performer um, with your words, with your movement, just with the way that you hold the stage, the hold the space. Um, can you talk a little bit about your internal process in terms of maintaining the balance between being the visionary and then physically stepping into the world that you're creating? You know what, that's such a good question. And it's always such a difficult process. Mm -hmm. Because um, I feel that when I'm writing a piece, um, you know, having it down on paper is one thing. And for me, I definitely always see it in my head first, which I think can be confusing. So it's like, I have this whole story in my head and then I'm putting it down on paper. Then I'm taking it from paper and I'm flushing it out to make it whole in my body to make, to make sure that the other, the people who are watching it are seeing mm what I'm thinking in my head, which I, I, it can be really difficult. So like, I think that, uh, I mean, for, for let's say for, for gluttony, for temperance, since we just saw temperance, it's like, I had, I knew that we were, this is temperance. This is the, the virtue of the, of the sin. Um, and it was like, I'm, how can I, how can I show that through my body, which is immediately as I was doing this, that, that image, and it was almost because I still had some left in my body from, from the prior time that I had done this with Marcus, even though, I mean, the stance, I mean, it, it, it is just like you said, like it, it really has taken this journey and it's so yeah. different. So that when I talked to Marcus, who I love working with because uh, not only is he an amazing mentor for me, but we've always kind of had this way of being on the same page all the time. Like I'll be thinking something, I'll get it halfway out. And he's like, oh, I was already thinking that. And I love it because um, immediately it was like, I could say, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling this kind of movement or this kind mm -hmm. of movement. And he would say, you know, oh, okay. So let, you know, let's take that, that image and that moment in the body and let's kind of, let it morph into whatever it is. <coughs> so it's 
kind of this Love that um, again like it, it's like I would say if I if I'm saying the word temperance and then I was going to put it in my body mm -hmm. like how would that be so it's a lot of I have to talk it out first it's a mm -hmm. lot of talking it out first and once I can uh really say what it is that whatever this piece is or this word this moment then I can start playing with it yeah um, that makes sense you know um, yeah can I th throw the same a similar question to Marcus then um your perspective also I think it's really interesting you have a lot of long-term relationships that are going into developing this project so there's a beautiful intimacy that is already coming through um, in the film, which I think is lovely. Um, Marcus, can you talk about your perspective on the devising process for this this work? Um, I, I fully agree with Jennifer. There, it, We just like dropped back into this way of working that it, it is, it's one of those things where she can just say something and I'm like, okay, and that's, that's where we're going. And uh, she is a fantastic collaborator and she also has, she's always had this, uh, this way of just fully embodying something, um, which is, you can't teach. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, like she's teach, she was always teaching me, she's still teaching me, um, just that that ability to, to become the character um, and, and you believe it. Like I can watch Jennifer read the, the phone book. It's one of those <laughs> kinds of things where it's just like, yeah, just, just yeah. read the phone book. Like I just need to be in, in your in your space. So it's it's so wonderful to, to have that relationship and that that um that connectivity that we don't have to, we're not starting from scratch, if that makes any sense. Like yeah, we're able to totally kind of we just pick up where we left off and keep going. I love that. Um, so in terms of how that might work in comparison to say your standard devising process, um, are there a lot of similarities or is it really different because of the nature of the work and the nature of the relationship? It's, for, for me, it's very different. Um, uh, if I don't know that I would be able to do the same process with anyone else, mm -hmm. um, if that makes any sense. So, so yeah, usually it's, it's about like spending hours of rehearsal trying to um, sequence movement or like, oh, do it this way. No, change it this way. I, I didn't have any of that this time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just like, this is this is what we're doing. I, I would just come in, I would have notes, we would talk, and then we were just able to start rehearsing. And and of course, like using cell phone videos to, to be able to have some footage to share with Val so that Val could start to see how it came together. So oh, the video wonderful. element changed the process for sure because we you always have to be thinking okay where's the camera while creating the work yeah when you're performing in live and on a theater you know where the audience is <laughs> that's not the same on film um Val I really um there's a lot that I loved about the way that you shot this um there's beautiful color beautiful vivid imagery the way you're framing the shot oh, thank you. is gorgeous um, can you tell me a little bit about like what sparks your curiosity um, as you're telling your this story through um, the, the medium of film? Like what, what leads you to some of your choices? Well, I would say light, you know, obviously what, where's the light going to affect the frame and, and where is she standing? Uh, where can I get like that first piece uh, we shot down by the creek in the woods and so nature, of course, that's my love. So, I mean, I can I could film that forever. And, and to put her right in the middle of that, and uh, th that was just easy. I just loved every minute of it. And, and I think I was happy with how that came out big time. Uh, the inside uh, was a little more difficult because we had a lot of small spaces like in the closet. I wasn't sure, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I couldn't see that part when we started to film it. I think I saw more of a thing with three or four cameras. I even had a GoPro up in the lantern or the chandelier above her in one scene because she was right in this area where I couldn't get lights around her at all. So anything I knew about any lighting, I couldn't have bought. <laughs> so we had to experiment. And, and my main thing was to just capture a lot of it because because a lot of it can happen in the editing room and i you know i know that and and she's a joy to work with in there too i mean we sat in the office and looked at the footage 
I was working on one, little, one small piece. Uh, in fact, we showed it tonight with the, you know, go, she's the one that came up with the black and white to the color idea. Mm. And uh, so we worked together on that. She came, she came up with the timing on that ding, and then it switches to the, so every, the thing I really love the way she approaches the work is that everything she does in it is important. Yeah. So it makes me, it, it, it means something. There's a meaning to it, whether it's something that she's wearing on her body or it's in the frame or whatever, it has a meaning to the story. And so that makes me be, you know, want to be a better filmmaker to make every frame uh, go toward that story as well. And so I, I want to keep a lot of the shots tight uh, mm -hmm. to, help do that, to help do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing I've always loved about your work, Jennifer, to tie into what Valerie was just saying, is you pull from a lot of different tools, like a lot of different creative storytelling tools. And that's something that I love as an artist. And I was actually a fan of yours before I was your friend. So <laughs> um, I love getting to have like a little witness to this project. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you make your choices in terms of like, as Val was saying, like you're making very specific choices in every level. Can you talk about a little bit about what drives some of those choices in terms of like what tool you're using at what time to tell the story? Yeah, sure. So um, for me, you know, again, and then we kind of mentioned it before that this is such an intimate thing. Um, mm -hmm. it's an, it's, the themes are, are very intimate, um, but also it's because a lot of this I'm pulling from my own experiences, right? Or I'm also talking about um, ex experiences that, you know, I, I, I have gotten from story circles or that kind of thing. Like I am I am morphing these real life, honest, truthful experiences. Um, so I'll have that and then uh, say not like pride when there's a poem that is happening, which I, I love poetry um, and, I, and I really feel that some ways it's easier for me to say what I want to say through a poem than it is mm -hmm. to say it. It's a whole other conversation. But so let's say that, so I have these experiences and then then I will, um, movement has always been really important to me mm -hmm. because your body tells a story yeah. at the moment. Your body language, the way that I'm standing or the way that I am positioning myself, it, everything is very intentional. So I, I do that on purpose because um, I, I am telling a story through my body, whether it's a character or it's myself. Um, also, uh, imagery is very important to me, mm -hmm. always been super important to me because, um, sometimes, um, I don't think that we're always able to hear the message, but sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? So if the image is, is, is really in your face of whatever it is that I'm talking about, that there is no question on what you're seeing so that I hope that, you know, with, through body language or through sound, through um, uh, color, through all these other different uh, aspects of storytelling that I'm able to say whatever it is I'm, I'm yeah. trying to say. I, I, hope well, I think you do. I think you do a beautiful job of that. I think we're coming at time. Um, so I want to keep everyone on track, but thank you. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for thank sharing you. so much in-depth information about this process. And thank you to Val and Marcus, um, mm -hmm. for doing the same. And thank you, Jennifer, for having me. Yes. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I, I want to just, again, thank Audra for moderating, um, moderating. I don't know what word I just said. Um, uh, this section and this event tonight. Um, thank you, Abrasive Media, uh, for supporting this work. Uh, also, another great big giant thank you to Metro Arts for providing us with the Thrive Grant. Um, that's making this whole thing possible. Thank you to the Women of Color Collaborative and Fashion is for Everybody for helping us to create uh, safe spaces to develop this work. Um, uh, if you want to keep up with uh, project updates, uh, please follow Kindling Arts Festival on Facebook and on Instagram and subscribe to their email newsletter at kindlingarts.com. 
Uh, again, I just want to thank everybody who is in attendance tonight, who uh, is interested in this piece and know that uh, this film is coming and it is coming soon. And I hope that you are as excited as I am to share this piece of art with all of you. Thank you so very much. Please be well. Good night. <laughs>